Okay, thank you very much, Derek. Um, so I'm going to take the opposite point of view. Not completely, of course, because that's not possible. <coughs> um, nothing to disclose. If we talk about the speed of emergence, we have to talk about pharmacokinetics. There is no way around it. So if we um, go back to the four compartment model of Ted Eager, we know that not just the anesthetic uptake of the tissue groups, but also the release of agent by these tissue groups uh, is a perfusion limited process. It's exponential. And both of these processes are determined by time constants. So what we are looking at right here is the exchange of inhaled anesthetic during emergence from the vessel rich group, in this case the brain, towards the compartment of the lungs. That's what we are looking at when we consider the time constant of the brain. So we already discussed how we determine the time constant. And I have to point out here that if you do the calculation of the time constant, it's not just the blood solubility that matters, but it's also the solubility in the CNS that matters. So if we only look at blood solubility, we are missing half of the equation. Of course, in general, uh, tissue solubility increases when blood solubility increases. That's a direct result of the, the chemistry of the molecule. But still, there's, they're not always linear, totally linear, these relationships. So uh, still, we have to look at this ratio when we calculate the time constant in the CNS. And um, that's why, for example, the time constant of isoflurane is slightly shorter than the time constant of SIVO because of that ratio. Although we know that the solubility of isoflurane is higher in blood uh, than that of SIVO. So this is what the time constant looks at. Uh, it looks at the speed of exchange between the vessel rich group, the brain, or the CNS, and the <laughs> lung compartment. But again, that's only half of the story when we look at uh, time constant. Another way to look at the time constant is to, if you look at the hydraulic model, uh, if you want to see how fast there is an exchange of vapor between the alveolar gas and the vessel rich group, you look at the diameter of the pipe that connects these two systems. The larger the pipe, the shorter the time constant, the faster the equilibration will be. But that's only half of the story. We also have clearance. You have to get rid of the agent, not just from the tissue group, towards the lungs, but you have to get it, rid of it from the body completely. And that's where ventilation comes into play. That's where clearance uh, plays a big factor. And what is clearance? Clearance is defined by the amount of the agent that's exhaled over the amount that's returned with venous blood. That's clearance. And if you do the calculation, then this is the formula. And uh, of course, here we have minute ventilation very important. The second very important factor here is blood gas solubility. Uh, uh, blood gas solubility. So these two factors play a role. And as Derek pointed out, we can't do anything about blood gas solubility. It is what it is. But we can do something about uh, minute ventilation. If we use a simple explanation of what the clearance could be, if we have a cardiac output and an alveolar minute ventilation of five liters per minute, very reasonable assumption, then we can calculate the clearance for each of these agents. And the clearance is quite a bit less for isoflurane than it is for sevoflurane and desflurane. So you get rid of the agent faster uh, for sevoflurane than for isoflurane. So it's not a surprise that these patients wake up a little bit faster. That's, that's a given fact. I actually did the gas mass simulation where I compared the elimination or the emergence time of different inhaled anesthetics. And this is after a 10 hour anesthetic. And we turned off the anesthetic after 10 hours from one MAC. And then we saw when in the vessel rich group, the, uh, the partial pressure in the vessel rich group was 0.3 MAC, which we considered to be uh, MAC awake. So, at this time, we would see awakening of the patient six minutes uh, for desflurane, roughly nine minutes for sevoflurane, and 
about almost 15 minutes for uh, isoflurane. What if we introduced hyperventilation and we increased minute ventilation in this gas man model from 5 to 10 liters per minute? And then we saw what the, we observed what the results would be as predicted by gas man. So we increased minute ventilation to 10 liters per minute. Um, this is a good model for isocapnic hyperventilation because gas man doesn't care about CO2. Uh, increasing minute ventilation doesn't do anything to arterial CO2. So gas man is a perfect uh, method to study isocapnic hyperventilation. In, in real life, we have to add CO2 or use some other modification to maintain normal carbia. And these are the results of the gas mass simulation. If we look at the effects on eyes of fluorine, they're quite significant. You have emergence now after about a little, uh, 10 minutes instead of the 15 in the control group. If you look at the emergence speed of sevoflurane, you go to about 7.5 from 9. <laughs> Uh, roughly, or from seven to nine, and for desferane, you gain about one minute. Um, not a whole lot. So isocapnic hyper hyperventilation does short the emergence time, and it's more significant for soluble agents. Um, there is a downside to it because it can slightly increase the risk of rehypnotization if you have hypoventilation after emergence. Um, but that's a whole topic on its own. And finally, the inflow of CO2 into the circuit requires a significant modification to the system. So the earlier studies showed a more effect of, it's simplified now, but still, it's a modification of your yes. system. The earlier studies showed uh, um, virtually the same uh, result as that Derek showed, but uh, they were a bit more significant, I would say. My problem was that frequently in the control group, these patients were hypoventilated for the initial part of the uh, recovery. Um, they applied gentle assisted ventilation, which is a very vague term, and to me it means they were hypoventilating this patient. So it's the methodology, I think, was not perfect in that they didn't maintain normal ventilation in the control group. The results are also going to be different if you it really increase the CO2 in the body. That is hypercapnic hyperventilation. And that indeed increases cerebral blood flow, uh, improving washout of the agent from the CNS. So that is definitely true. I think the definitive study was done by Andy de Bagnemaker and uh, from the group of Jan Poulart. And he did a very controlled study where they used isocapnic hyperventilation uh, after a very standardized remifentanil sevoflurane as anesthetic, um, where they did maintain normal ventilation during emergence very well in the control group. And what they found was that the end tidal concentration in both groups, the blue dots are the uh, normal ventilation group, the red dots are the isocapnic hyperventilation group. So indeed, um, the isocapnic hyperventilation results in a fast reduction of the entitled SIVO to about 0.3 mag value. This was age-adjusted mag also. And if they look at the calculated effect side partial pressure of SIVO fluorine in the CNS, uh, Ross Kennedy uh, found that these were the observed data points, the, again, for the normal ventilation blue, for the uh, isocapnic hyperventilation, the red dots. And they almost completely coincided with the observed emergence time in these two groups. In other words, the effect side partial pressure fitted very well with the observed information. So I think that's the definitive study on this topic. Um, and now the question comes up, is this worth it? And to paraphrase Ole John Nielsen, who gave a talk here several years ago about the polluting effect of inhaled anesthetics, if you think that, that saving two and a half minutes of sevoflurane anesthesia time is worth a modification, then it's worth it. If you don't think that saving two and a half minutes of total anesthesia time by not doing anything uh, is worth it, then it's not. So it's only a matter of point of view. Thank you.